so popcorn called calcification on chest x-ray seen in so what do you mean by this popcorn calcification we do have a quite a lot of conditions which have this fancy term popcorn popcorn cells are seen in hodgkin lymphoma lymphohistiocytic variety of hodgkin lymphoma right so this popcorn calcification what do we mean by that so radiological finding fine so it is actually it's amorphous calcification of course with amorphous in sense no shape a morphology it's no morphology no shape amorphous calcification with rings and nasa that's how that's what the calci uh, radiologists will say with the fancy terms popcorn calcification where do we come across if it this is a finding in a chest x-ray it has to be hematoma mostly not always and everything they say like this not always so mostly it's in hematoma door motto question so it's in hematoma Yeah. So it's in hematoma. Now, what are the other conditions where we, we come across such terms? Is that so? It can also happen with chondroid lesions, chondro ossifications like a chondroma, chondrosarcoma. Also, can have popcorn calcification. So apart from this, these such terms are used in like non-Hodgkin fibroma. More commonly, in breast, if such a term has been mentioned, the patient can be assured that the patient must be mostly having fibroadenoma. In uterus, the patient If the uterus such a finding we come across, it means the patient has got a calcified leiomyoma, like that. So mostly, this popcorn calcification points towards benign conditions. Not always. Like even chondrosarcoma can have, which is not a benign condition. Mostly, this is associated with benign conditions. So from the options given here, it is hematoma lung. All of the following are inhibitors of cell cycle action. The cell cycle has got its own driving protein, driver proteins, and it has own inhibitors. So, driving proteins, the ones that drive the cells into cell cycles, include cyclins, cyclin-dependent kinases. What is the order of appearance of cyclins in a cell cycle? It's cyclin B, E, A, B. Yeah, B, A. That's the order with which cyclins appear in the Cell cycle to push the cells into the cell cycle. So, what is the order and appearance of cell cycling dependent kinases in the cell cycle? It's again a mugging up stuff. Nothing much of logic applied over here. Just a mugging up stuff. Four, two, two, one. The cells B E A B four, two, two, one. Right. So, D cycling D complexes with cycling uh, C D K four. Cycling E complexes with C D K two. Taking A again complexes with CDK2 and taking B complexes with CDK1. They are that's a complex they make up. So they are for the cell cycle. They are for the cell proliferation. Okay, fine. So we do have certain inhibitors because if cell cycle goes unchecked, good Rishi, very good. You have given the answer for my question type also. Okay. So uh, so they appear in the order. And if the cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases overact, they will finally let the cells proliferate unconditionally, and that will result in tumor. So we have certain checkpoints, and of course with certain uh, very good set of cell cycle inhibitors. And these cell cycle inhibitors are the ones to regulate the cell cycle. So they functions again, again a, a must for the normal cellular uh, metabol cellular homeostasis. Fine. So, if cells, if there is mutations, activating mutations of cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, that will result in uncontrolled cell proliferation. If there are loss of function mutation of cell cycle regulators, cell cycle inhibitors, that again will result in malignancy because they lose their function. Cyclins will overact, cyclin-dependent kinases will overact. Cells will be in the cycle that will result in uncontrolled proliferation. That's the important why we discuss this. As an MCQ, so we have a uh, two set of uh, we have certain classes of inhibitors which belongs to this P twenty one, P twenty seven, P sixteen in four alpha, and fourteen alternating reading from P fourteen ARF. Okay, these are the uh, set of inhibitors. Which what is the importance of this P twenty one? Why it appears often in MCQ is because our tum our uh, guardian angel, the savior of human genome, the P fifty three. 
acts through P21. It immediates its effects through P21. Fine. And then about P27. And then about P27. So what is the importance of this is the TGF beta is again one of the anti-inflammatory molecule, anti-tumor molecule. So this mediates its effects through P27. So these are the valid features about these two markers. And then this P16 in 4 alpha, which tumor this P16 in 4 alpha undergoes uh, mutation? In a sense, an inherited mutation of P16 in 4 alpha will result in which malignancy? It's ink. Uh, one of the high yield question again. It's ink. Ink for black ink. Which slide will be black in color? In your, if you must have seen undergraduate slides. Okay, this one of the simple, I don't remember any of the slides of my undergraduate practical slides except one. That's only this slide. So that the slide which can be identified even after seeing the external appearance of the slide will be black in color. So the answer is melanoma. So inherited mutation of P16 in 4 alpha will result in melanoma. Fine. So this all these are uh, not just inhibitors of cell cycle, they are also tumor suppressor genes. They are our guardian angels. So what about the CDK2? CDK2 is a cell cycle protein. So CDK2 complexes with DEAB4221. So it complexes with E and it complexes with A. All of the following are true about nodular sclerosis of Hodgkin disease except. So you have a lymphoma subtype. Lymphoma, how it's classified? That, that has happened only with the last but one classification, real classification of lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma. So it's like classical and non-classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So we have a four subtypes under non-classical and one under classical. So the non-class, non-classical Hodgkin lymphoma includes nodular sclerosis, lymphocyte rich, lymphocyte uh, predominant and mixed cellularity. Lymphocyte depletion. Sorry, lymphocyte depletion. Lymphocyte predominant comes under classical or non-classical Hodgkin lymphoma. I'm sorry, I repeat. So classical lympho not Hodgkin lymphoma includes nodular sclerosis, lymphocyte rich, lymphocyte uh, depleted and mixed cellularity. Your non-classical Hodgkin lymphoma includes lymphocyte predominant subtype. Fine. So uh, there are a lot of differences between these two. And the major, most, at, at least from pathologist perspective, you know, like the uh, differences are prognostically, the uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma is better. It will do better in compared with uh, non, uh, sorry, your lymphocyte predominant subtype will have much, much better prognosis than your uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma subtypes. Earlier, you know, like at least from seven, eight years before, Nodular sclerosis was on the top with excellent prognosis. But now it has been reclassified saying that lymphocyte predominant subtype has got the much better prognosis. And then, and from the pathologist's view, from the pathologist's view, how do we see the difference in sense? The CD markers. Uh, what are Hodgkin lymphoma markers? CD 15 and 30. If this doesn't complete the answer. So when you are asked a uh, question about uh, uh, Hodgkin lymphoma markers, 15, 30 and 320. If you want to add something more, you can also add EMA and BCL6. EMA, epithelial membrane and EMA and BCL6. What is BCL6? BCL6 is a pro-apototic marker. Give me one example for tumor that expresses BCL6. You have to answer. Okay, so I will come back to this question. So this BCL6 EMA are also expressed by non-classical Hodgkin lymphoma. So 15 and 30 are markers of classical Hodgkin lymphoma and a CD20 EMA and BCL6 are markers of non-classical Hodgkin lymphoma. That's how it goes. 